Hello. In this video, we're going to move into Chapter 6 of the Mathematics of Investment and Credit, 7th edition by Samuel Berberman. Chapter 6 is about the term structure of interest rates, and we're going to do exercise 6.1.1. We'll be finding the price and the effective annual yield of a bond when we're given what's called the term structure of interest rates for zero coupon bonds of various maturities. This is kind of nice. It's going to allow us to review Chapter 4 on bonds. It's also going to allow us to review Chapter 5, thinking about yield rates and making use of the calculator. I'll show you a couple different ways to calculate the yield rate here that we have seen before. So here's the problem statement. You were given the following term structure. This whole thing here represents what's called the term structure. These numbers represent effective annual rates of interest for zero coupon bonds of different maturities of one, two, and three years maturity respectively. Okay, so these are just interest rates that are being quoted on those bonds based on given market, market conditions. One year zero coupon bonds are gonna give you a return of 15% at the present time. Two year zero coupon bonds are gonna give you an interest rate return of 10%, and three year zero coupon bonds are gonna give you a return of 5%. That might seem a little strange, you might expect that if the term is longer, you would get a higher rate of return, and that is actually usually true. This is not a typical situation. Uh, this is something something called an inverted yield curve, but um, we go ahead and go with it in the problem anyway. Let me go ahead and emphasize that idea of a yield curve before we look at what we're supposed to do here. We can graph this term structure in the following way. We can make a graph where we have the the term of the bond along the horizontal axis and these individual interest rates, which by the way also have a name, they're called spot rates. Spot rates for these different terms on zero coupon bonds. And I will label the vertical axis with that. Spot rates. Terms can be one, two, or three years in this example, and these numbers go down linearly from 0.15 to 0.10 to 0.05. You can plot those points and connect them with a straight line. In general, this thing is going to be a curve, but this curve seems to be probably well approximated in this case with a straight line. This is called a yield curve. And again, this is not typical. Typically, you get an increasing yield curve. This one's decreasing, and in fact, because of that, it's called an inverted yield curve, the fact that it's going down over time. You would typically expect your rates of return on longer-term invest investments to be larger because you've got more risk involved because of the fact that market conditions can change and inflation can go up and that kind of thing. But that's what we have in this problem. So what are we supposed to do now? It says a newly issued three-year bond that is going to have coupons. It's got a face amount of 100 and has annual coupon rate of 10% with coupons paid annually. This is not the usual thing. Remember, coupons usually are paid twice a year. Here, we're keeping it simple and saying they're just being paid once a year, starting one year from now. Find the price and the effective annual yield to maturity of the bond based on these spot rates here. So again, these things are all deter determined by market conditions. The price and yield are all based on supply and demand. What kind of bonds are available? What do corporations want um, to give you in return? And what are you willing to buy? That kind of thing. So the prices and yields aren't usually calculated in this way, but we certainly could think about them based on these spot rates and this term structure if we wanted to. And you might say it's a, if these are accurate uh, spot rates, which they, which they would be because these are based on uh, given yields that are out in the market. Um, it's probably going to give you your most accurate indicator of what the price should be. Whether it is that price or not is another question. Let's now make a timeline to re-emphasize uh, what's going on here. So time zero is right now when we buy this bond. And you've got these, um, again, the face amount is 100. That's labeled with letter F. You've got the coupon rate of 10%, which is... Uh, an annual rate, but coupons are paid once per year, so I don't divide it by two. The nominal annual rate is the same as the effective annual rate in this case. R is 0 0.10, and the coupon amount is then F times R. 100 times 0 0.10 is 10. 
So you get coupon payments at time one, time two, and time three, but then you also get the redemption amount, which is the same as the face amount here implicitly, of 100 at time three. Okay, so that's the kind of returns that you get. What is the price based on this? We don't know the yield rate, so we're not computing the price based on the yield rate. We're going to find the yield rate. We are computing the price based on these spot rates in this term structure. We take the 10 at time 1 and discount it back to time 0 using the 15% return. So multiply by 1.15 to the negative 1, which would be effectively dividing by 1.15. Take the 10 at time 2 and discount it back 2 years to time 0, but use the 10% uh, return on 0 coupon bonds. To do that discounting, multiply by 1.10 to the negative 2. And finally, you've got the 10 coupon and the 100 face amount at time 3. You've got 110 coming back to you. Going back in time 3 years, use R3, multiply by 1.05 to the negative 3 power. And that will be the price based on this perspective. Okay. So we go ahead and do this calculation now. The first one I'll just do 10 divide by 1.15, store that in register 1. Here we got 1.1 to the negative 2 times 10, store that in register 2. Finally we've got 110 times 1.05 to the negative 3. That turns out to be about 95.02. Now add what's in register 1 and what's in register 2. Looks like the price is about 111.98. I'll carry a few more decimal places, but of course, in practice, we'd round this to 111.98. That will be the price. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now we want to find the effective annual yield to maturity. And so we'll use the calculator again, financial functions. And let me, in fact, do it in two ways, showing you both ways uh, that I've shown you in this kind of situation so that you could figure out the yield. Uh, the simpler way, you might say, is to use these buttons, N, I, slash, Y, P, V, P, M, T, and F, V. That might be what you want to default to for bonds. But we can also use the cash flow worksheet, as we did in Chapter 5, for more general transactions. We can use it for bonds here as well. All right, so we've got, first of all, we've got three periods. So three would be what goes into N. Next, we have the present value, which is the same as the price, though you want to think of it as outgoing money. 111.98, let me carry more decimal places, 225. Put a negative sign, think of it as outgoing money. You are paying for this bond. Uh, so that goes into PV for the present value. And then you have the... Um, payments, which are the coupon amounts, 10. That goes into PMT. That's coming to you, so think of that as a positive amount. And then the future value, the 100 at time 3. 100 for future value at time 3. Positive, it's coming back to you. That's what goes into FB. All right, so now we can do CPT, I slash Y, compute interest per year, about a yield of 5.5542%. The yield is approximately 5.5542%. This is assumed to be with a percent sign as a default. As a decimal without a percent sign, that would be 0 0.055542. Okay. I think the answer in the back of the book is slightly different, um, maybe with an extra 5 there, because they I think they round that one more. Okay. But to three decimal places, then it ends up being the same. Let's also use the cash flow worksheet. So clear it out, press CF. If you need to, you can clear the worksheet. It looks like I don't need to, but I press second and then clear work down here. All right, plug in the same numbers. CF0 is going to be the price with a negative sign, 111.98225, negative. Enter that. C01, um, I can take to be the 10. Enter that. Now, got to be a little careful here. You might say, okay, the frequency of the payments of 10 is 3. However, then if you put into C02, if you put the 100, it's going to assume, the calculator is going to assume that that 100 is at a time 4. So actually, if I want to use the frequency for the 10, I want to just do a 2. I could also just enter the 10 more than once. Tab down, and now for time 3, do 110. Enter that. 
and then press IRR CPT and we get the same answer okay for the yield let me just end this video by reminding you of a bond price formula the basic formula and see that this yield gives us the same price you could sort of think as the yield is kind of like an average rate of return based on these spot rates and the, the term structure here um, what is the basic formula for a bond price it is that the price is the coupon amount F times R times the present value of an annuity immediate with end payments at the yield rate J plus the present value of the redemption amount. The redemption amount is typically denoted by a C and its present value would be V sub J to the N power where N is the number of payments here, J is the effective uh, periodic interest rate here, the yield rate. In this case the J is going to be 0 0.055542. So now if I plug these numbers in here let's just check that we get the same price. So F times R again is 10, N is 3, J is 0 0.055542, C the redemption amount is 100, and then I'd have 1.055542 to the negative 3 power, because this is really 1 over V right there. So this should give us the same price. This should give us 111.98. Let's see if it does. So take this IRR, divide by 100, to get it in decimal form, compute this thing, so I'd have to, well, let me let me store this thing in register zero. I could do one added to that. Um, let me get rid of the IRR there. Quit out of that. There is the IRR as a decimal, add one to that. Um, take its reciprocal to the third power, subtract from one, divide by the IRR, a3 is about 2.6952 times 10. Store that in register 1. And then take what's in register 0, add 1 to it, raised to the negative 3 power, times 100. Add what's in register 1. And we do indeed get 111.98. Same answer. Okay, so that's satisfying to see that we get the same answer and it allowed us to review the basic formula for a bond price.